The Bible teaches us that God's mercies or chances to get it right are new every morning. But sometimes it is easy for us to get stuck in the same old routine. As we begin a new year, how about hitting the reset button so we can claim the fresh start, the new beginning God offers to us. And as we rediscover our true identity in the love of God, together we will discover new purpose and head off in an exciting God-given direction. Good morning, church family. What a joy and a blessing to worship together from home today. It's been a long week, but as a result of the snowstorm, we are unable to worship in the sanctuary. Although I've been waiting for a long time for the whole week to meet you and worship together. I pray and hope that in the comfort of our homes, we can find some time to reflect and to worship the Lord. In our service today, today you'll hear a message from Reverend Enga, who is the Director of Resource for Greater New Jersey. Um, as you know, we've been on a journey of reset, and by God's direction, we will have a, a message from Reverend Enga later in the service today. Come with me, let us pray. God of grace and glory, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving and praises on our lips. Today we are in need of an alignment that only you can give. Open our hearts and minds to receive all that you have to offer so that we may be a difference in this world. Transform our souls to grow more into your image, that others may see you in us. Accept our brokenness and make us whole again. Reset, restore, and direct us. These things we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
And now for our call to worship. I'll read the lines and you read together the bold lines. We come so sure of the way of faith and the ways of faith. So sure of the ways we do not expect surprises. God of the road, you step into our path and settle us. So sure of the way we are stopped in our tracks. Surprise us, nudge us, redirect our steps. So sure of the way, Lord, awaken us into new possibilities. Amen. Hi guys, Miss Candy here with the children's message for today and I'm hoping that you are nice and warm and that you had a nice day in the snow or that you, I didn't go out in the snow, I didn't want to get any colder than I already am, but I'm hoping that you, if you were a snow bunny, that you went out and had some fun in the snow. Today's message I'm going to read to you. Uh, it comes from the book of Luke, Luke 4, 38 and 39. So here we go. Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. So he bent over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up at once and began to wait on them. Well, this is a true miracle that Jesus did in front of other folks. He healed this woman. But what made it even more proof that it was a miracle is that she got up right away and started waiting on them. That means she must have got up and maybe asked them if they were hungry and made them some food. Or maybe she made them a cup of tea. Or maybe she was asking them what would make them more comfortable in her home. When you're sick and you're getting better, it takes you a little bit to get better. You don't just jump up and go play or jump up and go back to school or jump up and get back to whatever you were working on. You're, you're still a little groggy and a little iffy for a while. But not when Jesus healed her. He really healed her. He healed her where she was no longer sick. And she got up like it was the best day in her life and started taking care of everybody. That was a sign that this was a true miracle. And Jesus went on to heal many folks. And he proved to so many people that he, the spreading of love and taking care of the people and that he was the Messiah. This was proof. And this miracle was one of many. And we're going to learn about many miracles that Jesus performed in his life in Sunday school and in church this year. But this is the beginning of telling you about a story that we know is truly a miracle. And I hope you have many miracles in your life. You may not recognize them as miracles, but you never know when something good happens in your life that's unexpected or something that you had no idea was going to happen, something good, something that really caused an inspiration for you or something that makes you do something even better or is it a miracle when you help somebody there may be a miracle to somebody in their life so what we should try to do is maybe they're not the true type of miracles Jesus performed but we can perform miracles every day by helping others taking care of others and you never know how much that means to that other person so try to perform a little miracle today. Maybe help shovel some snow or maybe just make sure you help take care of a sibling. Or just being good for a day and not getting in any trouble. We all need miracles in our lives and Jesus was one of the greatest givers of miracles. I hope to see you guys soon. Take care, stay warm, and have fun. Bye-bye.
Friends, each of us are called to go anew. God giving directions at different times and different ways. Today, you are invited to listen to God's call and to give your time, talent, treasure as you feel led. Your offerings will go towards furthering the church that Paul and Ananias were united to build and of which we are inheritors. This time, let us prepare our hearts and let us give our offering together. Let us pray the offering prayer together. Faithful God, as we move forward in this new year, help us listen to your call and obey. We thank you for these gifts received today and ask you to bless and unite us in our mission to make disciples for the transformation of the world. Good morning, everyone. Today's scripture reading is from Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 15. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias! Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for the man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In the vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus' coming wasn't to create professional Christians. Jesus came to give us the power to reset our direction each day, turning to wherever the Holy Spirit is working and cooperate. Mom, I have a better way to get to school. My daughter, six years old at the time, said these words from our back seat as I began driving her to school. Now, I can't remember if the bus never came that day or if we missed it altogether. 
But what I do remember, though, is that from the back seat of my car, my normally quiet and reserved and organized child became a human GPS. I didn't realize that on her morning bus ride, she had memorized the entire bus route from our house to school. That day, frustrated, in a hurry, and flustered, I said, oh goodness. Now let me see what's the quickest way to get you to school. And my daughter, without missing a beat, says, Mom, don't take your way. I have a better way. Having nothing to lose and wanting to get her to school on time, I gave up control and let a six-year-old take the wheel, figuratively speaking. As I drove, I listened to my daughter as she gave me every direction. Turn here, go straight, turn left, get in that lane, go right. What do you know, friends? We arrived at her school on time and in one piece with our spirits calmer than when we had first begun the trip. God calls Saul and Ananias to reset their direction in today's scripture passage. Now, Acts 9 is one of my favorite passages because the writer of Acts, Luke, tells us the trouble right up front. Now, Saul was still breathing out threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, is how verse 1 opens. Saul had requested letters from the high priest, a Jewish religious official, sent to the synagogues in Damascus to imprison followers of the way, the way of Jesus. As Saul was busy capturing and persecuting and killing followers of Jesus, God met him right in the middle of all that. A light shines from heaven and a voice says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? The voice tells Saul its identity when he asks for it. I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Immediately, Saul is blinded and did not eat for three days. His eyes were open, the scriptures tell us, but he couldn't see anything. His physical state was indicative of his spiritual condition. Saul thought that because he had been educated about God and had all the credentials that somehow he knew about God, how God moved and the way God worked. And yet, Saul was blind to the true ways in which the Spirit of God moves. It was Ananias, a follower of the way, whom the Spirit of God spoke to in a vision. God told Ananias to go to where Saul was and stay there. The Spirit of God had already met Saul in his blindness, showing him a vision of a man named Ananias, who would come and lay his hands on Saul so that he could regain his sight. You see, church, God doesn't wait for us to understand everything or believe completely before the Spirit of God meets us and transforms us. God resets our direction where we are, just how we are. Did you hear me? God resets our direction right where we are, just how we are. Now, for God's sake and for the sake of our neighbor and for our own sakes, let's be honest. We don't like resetting our direction. We don't even like making wrong turns by mistake and having the GPS say that dreaded word, recalculating or rerouting. Why? Well, because it takes us away from the direction we wanted to go. We also don't like resetting our direction because our culture tells us that progress and moving forward are good all the time. Everywhere we turn, the value of progress and moving forward is all around us, even when we suffer deep loss and trauma and pain. The pressure to move on is right there. Pressing pause on the direction of our lives and agendas is not a value of this world. We don't even like to stop to ask for directions from someone when we're lost on a road. 
Many of us, I am sure, can testify to the fact that when we have to temporarily press pause on the direction of our lives or plans or agendas, we feel like failures. But friends, we can't move forward or progress in anything without asking God for direction. We can't move forward or progress in anything without discerning what we are doing and why we are doing it and how we are doing it. In the same way, many of us have lived our Christian faith in familiar ways and spaces, serving in the same way and routine for most of our lives. It takes all of us meeting God in the ordinariness and messiness of life in an extraordinary way that nudges us to discern the Holy Spirit's movement in a new way, a way that makes us take a new direction in a way we didn't expect. Both Saul and Ananias were called by God to take a new direction in a faith in a way that they didn't expect. Now, sometimes God's grace arrests us, convicting us so that we can change direction in our lives like in Saul's conversion story. And God's grace calls us even after we are delivered from our own sinful paths to reset our directions again and again to stay in lockstep with the Holy Spirit, like it says in Galatians 5, 25, which says this, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. This is exactly what Ananias did in the disciples' response to God when the Lord calls Ananias' name in a vision. The disciple says, here I am, Lord. Resetting our direction every day with the Spirit of the Lord means our hearts and minds and spirits must remain humble and open to God's leading, whatever that looks like. We can't be addicted to our outcomes or married to our plans or seeking our own agendas and strategies at the total exclusion of the Spirit's leading. Yes, God will use our plans and agendas at times to deliver and heal others. And God will bust our plans and agendas wide open so we don't remain blind to all the wondrous, rich ways the Spirit of God is working in our world and in the lives of others, no matter how much we think they cannot be saved. I invite you to think about a change God is nudging you to make in your own life. Maybe it's spending more time with God in prayer. Maybe it's spending more time reading scripture and reflecting on it. God may be inviting you to spend more time serving others in a deeper way. Or maybe it's breaking a mindset or habit that has stopped you from experiencing true freedom in Jesus' name. I also invite your church to think about a change God has been nudging you all to make. Where is God leading your congregation in this season? The direction could be a completely new one, one that pushes everyone to gain new insight into the identity and purpose God has given you. Maybe God is calling your church to carve out intentional time together, apart from the regular worship time to discern your direction in this season. Or could it be that God is leading your congregation to stop doing a ministry the way it has always been done to serve in a way that deeply connects with the community around you. After we discern how God is leading us to reset our direction in our personal lives and in the life of our churches, how do we do it? How do we reset our direction? Well, Ananias' response to God points the way for us in Acts 9, 13 through 17. The first thing is to be honest with God in prayer about where you're struggling and what you need most. Ananias was honest before God about his fear of meeting Saul and why the fear was there. Saul was a murderer and had murdered countless followers of the way. 
and Ananias was a follower of the way. The second way that we can reset our direction is to do what Ananias did and be faithfully obedient to what God is leading us to do. Ananias went to Saul obeying what God told him to do. Ananias didn't know what to expect once he arrived to Saul and he was trusting in God's direction for Saul's complete healing. The final thing that we can do to reset our direction is to have courage. Ananias entered the house where Saul was and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he laid hands on Saul just as God had told him to do saying, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road you were traveling has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Church, no matter how the Spirit of God is leading us to reset direction in our lives and reset direction in the lives of our churches, let's remember that we don't reset our direction alone. God always goes with us, empowering us to be transformed for God's glory and be transformed as the church so others can be healed and freed. In Jesus' name, amen.
People of God, I hope you were blessed through the worship, the prayers, the messages, and everything today. As we go forth, let us remember, let us know that there are times we may not understand, there are times we may not see, but God will always be our guide. We will continue to keep our faith alive in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the difficulties, in the midst of all the trials that comes our way. And it doesn't matter this week whether you are battling through sickness and disease, whatever is going through on in our lives, I pray that the Lord will grant us grace. The Lord will grant us God's perfect peace. I pray that the Lord will lead us and will direct us into God's path of righteousness. You will never fail. God will continue to direct your path. The Lord will continue to lead you and lead us in every direction and in every way through all the changing scenes of life. This week, may we have a blessed week that has received benediction. Now, may the Lord go before us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us. And may the Lord grant us perfect peace. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us and for worshiping together. Um, I look forward to see us next Sunday. I really, really look forward. But until then, please remember we love you. And there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. Have a wonderful week. And stay warm and stay calm. Get some hot chocolate. God bless you. Bye-bye.